by my computer. Uh, my name is David Prosser and I'm chair of the Jefferson County Planning Board. I will have to rely on professional people at the planning board there to tell me whether I've got a quorum and things of that nature because according to my screen, I can't tell who everybody is, just phone numbers. Anyway, I will open the regularly scheduled meeting of the Jefferson County Planning Board for um, June. I'll open that meeting. Uh, Andy Nevin, do I have a quorum? Are there six members of the planning board? Yes, yes, we have more than that, yes. Oh, okay, very good. All right, the meeting is open. Our first order of business is acceptance of the minutes of the uh, May meeting. You've received copies of those minutes. Uh, is there any questions, comments, objections? If not, I'll make a motion that they be accepted. Is there a second? I'll second, Dave. Okay, Deb, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are accepted. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Borsi and Andy will kind of tell you the, the game plan uh, how we want to conduct this uh, meeting. Uh, Mike will offer legal basis for us to have a meeting via Zoom and kind of tell you the batting order. Uh, all right, where's my agenda? Are there any members of the public who wish to address the board on any matters other than the agenda items, the projects for today? Okay, uh, Mike and Andy, please uh, tell us the batting order and uh, the rules concerning uh, whether you can speak and keep your microphone on and those type of things. Andy? Um, I, I just wanted to start because we did have a lot of correspondence. Um, so just before we start the meeting, uh, we did get a number of letters, emails, uh, postcard, um, you know, quite quite a few members of the uh, community opposing one of the projects from the neighborhood. Um, I didn't know if you wanted a summary of those. Uh, we did send most of them out to our board members. We got a few late late today, so they haven't been seen by the board. But the um, I have a, the issues summarized. If you want to hear those, or we could do that during the review of that project. Well, I, I thought they were all in relation to the, the one project there. That I didn't address them specifically, but uh, when we get to that project, uh, you can summarize them, Andy, and uh, okay. we can look forward to those type of people. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, Mike. Okay. Yep. I guess I'll, uh, I'll talk now. Um, I'm Michael Borsi. I'm the uh, director of the Jefferson County Planning Department. And because we have a large number of uh, people attending virtually this county pl planning board meeting, um, I just wanted uh, everyone to have an understanding of the county planning board and our process in general and specifically when we review projects. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the county planning board is authorized through general municipal law to review certain projects in municipalities. Um, in, in the case today, um, the one with uh, the, the number of uh, people attending the, this meeting, it's a, a site plan review. And that is uh, one of the criteria for sending a project to the county planning board is if it's a, if a local board is reviewing a, a site plan and the parcel of land that the project is located on is within 500 feet of a municipal boundary, uh, which in this case uh, happens to be the uh, international boundary, which is also the town of Alexandria boundary. So that is why we are reviewing the, the one town of Alexandria um, project um, today. Now the county planning board only makes a recommendation back to the local board. You know, you you could hear approval, uh, approval of modifications, 
disapproval or it's a project of local concern only. But all those are is a recommendation to the local board to approve, approve with modifications, disapprove, or it's, it's deemed a project of local concern. So the, the final decision on projects that we review is held with the, the local municipality um, being a, a home rule state. The actual process during the county planning board meeting is that our staff will, through a PowerPoint, present the project. We'll you know, go through a description of the project. Um, it's going to, or we're going to show aerial photos of it, um, photos um, from the water. Um, there'll be you know, site plans, other plans provided. And then our, our staff uh, person, Andy, will go through a description of the project. Um, he will go through issues that staff has identified um, while reviewing the project. Um, we will then ask our board members if they have any questions or comments on the project. Once we get um, through that, we will ask the project engineer if he has any information that maybe staff missed while we're presenting the project. After that, um, we uh, have had a request from attorney Bob Sly who is re representing a group of people um, about this project. Uh, he, he requested to speak, so we'll, we're going to give him an opportunity to speak on the project. And what I would like to ask everyone else, if you would like to comment on this project, if you could type your name in the chat box uh, and, and what project you wanna comment on, because we do have some other projects. Um, when we get to the point of the, the public comment period for a project, we will call on the people that are listed uh, in the chat box. We are asking that um, uh, people keep their comments to five minutes. Um, there is a potential for a lot of people that would like to comment. So, you know, we, we'd like to get through, um, through in a, uh, you know, orderly manner on this. Um, people are going to be to start out muted, um, and, and that's because we've had issues with background noise um, interfering with our uh, board members being able to hear the staff presentation. Uh, and um, you can unmute yourself when it come when we call on you to um, to comment on a project. Um, I would also ask that everyone please put your name in the chat box so we have a record of who is on the call um, or uh, you know, attending the meeting because um, some people are only listed by telephone number and so we're not sure you know, who that is and we, we'd like to have an accurate record of uh, who is in attendance um, at our meetings. Um, and because we're anticipating that the Sport Island project will be a long, longer review, we only have a small agenda. So we are going to actually go through the other projects first, which shouldn't take long at all. Um, so then any representatives of those projects will not have to um, stay on the, uh, on the meeting for, for the whole time. So, um, in, in summary, we're going to go through our other projects first, then we're gonna do the, the Sport Island project um, at the end. If you'd like to talk, um, please put your name in, in the chat box. And I'll tell you that I am not a, a tech wizard and I'm not an expert in Google Meet, but I'm looking at my chat box and I don't see any, any names at all in the, in the chat box. Um, I don't know if I'm just missing something or if no one's going to want to talk other than Mr. Sly, but we all know he, he loves to talk anyways. <laughs> um, so I'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Andy Nevin 
who's going to attempt to do a, a thorough, re, a thorough review. Well, sorry, I, I'm not going to turn it over to Andy. Um, he, he's doing the Spore Island um, uh, project. I'm going to turn it over to um, either Andy or, or Sarah to start the other projects. So you guys can um, take it away. Okay. Who, who's up for the uh, town of Alexandria? Uh, that, that would be me and Andy Nevin, senior planner of Jefferson County Planning. So I'm just going to grab the presentation now. Okay. Um, I, I would want to add though, when you're, when you are going to speak and you unmute yourself, you have to turn the volume off on your computer. Otherwise, the computer and the phone interact and you get a lot of echoes. That's what we were hearing earlier. So you make sure and mute your computer if you're speaking through the phone. That's the only thing I would want to say. So uh, our first project um, is proposed by Mike or Chris Finney, and it's in the town of Alexandria. Um, it is for uh, Finn's A Bay Redemption Center. Uh, can everyone see the, the town image here? Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. So he's proposing a bottle and redemption, uh, bottle and can redemption center to include water and soft drink sales. And it may also include boat and vehicle storage and display. And it is proposed at, on Route 12 just before you get to the village of Alexandria Bay. So um, here's uh, Route 12 and Route 26. So here's where the bottle uh, redemption center is gonna be. And um, you can see that there are three properties here, um, but as you zoom in, you can um, see that there's an existing building here and then these are boats and, and uh, on display when it was a boat store, a boat uh, shop, like they did repair and sales and storage. So that this was, that was a historical use of it. Um, and you can see the, I think Otter Street behind the property, um, but this is Route 12, okay. And I did a site visit the other day and this is the property now, um, last week. So you've got the building and then um, they're just kind of starting the process there for um, the bottles collection. So um, here's, here's the site and you can see one access here, um, but there are um, a few of them. Like here's, here's another access on the 12. And um, yeah. yeah, so the rest of the site, let me go back to the aerial. Um, the rest of the site, he, he I think, Mr. Finney's intending to either use as boat storage and display, or um, he was he was describing some other uses that he may he may want to do, but he, that wasn't firmed up yet. So um, at this point, it's a bottle and, and redemption center and possible boat storage. Um, now we did get a site plan, but it was basically the aerial photo with a marker that kind of covered up some of this. So I, I'm going to just use this aerial here. Um, let's see. So the comments we identified um, deal with um, New York State Department of Transportation highway work permit. Um, they'll need to be contacted and permission granted if the driveways will be altered. Um, and potentially for the change in use. Um, normally we speak to them. I, I didn't get a call back, so I, I wasn't able to get in touch with them. Um, local comment deals with um, the local board should request a site plan demonstrating the proposed use of parking spaces and resulting interior traffic circulation. Um, and the, the drawing should indicate the boat storage and display areas and any other uses intended to be conducted on the premises to ensure adequate parking and safe traffic circulation will be provided 
for all proposed uses. Um, and then lastly, if approved, the local board should state specifically what uses are approved and their location in order to ensure they can be accommodated safely on site to include parking spaces for employees and customers as required by the zoning law. Um, any, any questions? Does the board have any questions or comments? If not, staff has made recommendation that this is a project of local concern only and to be returned to the locality with the uh, above comments. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Right here, Dave. Huh? Oh, Cliff? Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Excuse me, was that last comment? Okay. That, that motion was carried then. Are you keeping records of this, uh, Andy, there so that we know who's made the uh, motions and seconds? Yeah, yeah, we we try, yeah. And okay. We, I forgot, we do record the meeting as well. Okay. Uh, that's part of the state law requirement mm -hmm. for conducting virtual meetings, so that it is being recorded. All right, that'll make my job a little easier. Okay. Uh, who's doing the town champion? That would be Sarah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, can you see my location map for the town of champion? Not yet. No. No. Not yet. No. That's weird. Um, got, got a lot of people's faces, but no map yet, Sarah. Well, um, I have it on, so let me start over again. <coughs> All right. Oh, you know why, Andy? You probably didn't stop presenting. I did stop presenting. Okay. Maybe I jumped in too early. There we go, Sarah. Okay, that's it. We got the town of champion in front of us. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, gotta get my. You do want to swap your screen. screen? We just lost it, man. You lost the location map. Yep. Now it's the wrong way. Come back. What do you guys see now? Sorry. Nothing. No maps people. or anything, or just again, just the people that are taking part in the discussion here. Okay, so started there. Um, okay. Who's going to do the town of uh, Clayton? The next one, maybe we can go to that and get back with you, okay. sir, in a minute. Well, <laughs> we're sort of trying to get mine up right now. Okay, there it is. There we go. It's back. That's weird that it's back. Okay, yeah. don't touch anything. Now, what do you see? Small area photo and the town map. So they're seeing this. Just go ahead. All right, I'm just going to, I'm going to go because if I hit the next slide, for some reason it deletes. So sorry about that. Okay. Um, so this is site plan review um, to expand a vet clinic, veterinarian clinic located in the town of Champion. Um, it is the countryside veterinarian clinic. It is located at 21995 Cole Road, which is right near the intersection of Cole Road and Route 26. I'm trying to get my pointer in here, which is right there. Um, Sorry to say right this, but you, we just lost you again. Oh my God, so you can't see anything? No. Um, Andy? Okay, I'll come back. Like as soon as I... What do you... I don't know why I was doing that. Okay. We can see that you're talking because uh, your little S is flashing back and forth, but uh, there are no other visual aids. Here, put this over there. Yeah. 
never done it that way before. Sarah, are you in the office or are you home? No, no I'm in the office. Okay, well, help her out, Andy. He's here with me. Yep, all right, so you gotta present. Okay. 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 Now we have we have the aerial photo of the the plot plan there. Okay. Hold on a second, because it's backward to me now. Yeah, but this is where you want to look. Okay. So you're fine. So now we don't look here. I know. There. I want to go back one slide. Okay. Now do you see the aerial photo with Route 26? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think I know what my technical issue was, but we won't get into that now. Um. Okay. Yeah, let me try to get that pointer. Um, okay, so here we are, Route 26. This side road is called Cole Road. This is Carthage High School. And this is the Meadow, uh, Meadowbrook Terrace Senior Living Complex. This is a church. And over here you have J&B ice cream. So this is the Countryside Veterinarian. And they're looking to expand, yes. The site is zoned business, which allows animal hospitals with site plan review. Um, this is just a close up of the existing situation. Right now they have one driveway access on the coal road. They've got parking in the front and parking along um, the side. They also have an enclosed fenced in area towards the rear. Um, this is a photo from coal road shows the front of the building. You can see where the parking just ends here in the front. Um, another photo from Cole Road again shows the front. It shows the side over here with a lot of parking on that side. And then this is looking towards uh, Route 26. That's the ice cream shop in the background again on Cole Road. Um, here on the site plan, this is the existing access onto Cole Road. And note that in the future, there'll be a second access onto Cole Road. Um, these dashed lines right here, so everything beyond these dashed lines represents either new asphalt and new parking or a configuration of existing um, parking and asphalt. So right now you come in, there will be the addition of all this parking along the front. And then going back up here, there's this whole parking parking section over here. The existing building is depicted in orange and the existing fenced in area back here is also in orange. The proposed additions are in pink and they're on the side and a little bit in the front, it kind of just squares off the building. And then again, on this side, also there's some S um, concrete back over here. I don't know whether or not this is fenced in or not. And then in the back of this addition, there's a large fence enclosure back here. There's also proposed trash enclosure right here, and there's going to be entrances or exits, you know, to, towards this new addition and an entrance and exit off the parking lot to this addition. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on in either of these additions because there was no floor plan submitted. Um, the, I think the total, total square footage of this is approximately 4,300 square feet of addition. Um, they have 53 parking spaces, which meets code. And other than that, for county state comments, we stated a building permit is required. Um, an ag data statement is required as the property is located within 500 feet of a farm operation located within a New York State certified ag district. And for local comments, if the proposed enclosed areas located towards the west and south sides of the site are to be used by dogs. There may be noise impacts to the residential project located next door. The local board should consider requiring landscaping along the perimeter to act as a buffer. And if there's proposed lighting, um, it should meet the criteria identified in the zoning law. So any questions on that one? Any of the members, planning board members uh, questions, comments? If not, Staff has made recommendation that this is a project of local concern only with our comments to be returned to the applicant. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second, Lisa. Okay, Lisa. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? That'll go back to the local agency there. All right. Um, who's doing the town of Clayton? That would be me. Just a moment. Okay, so um, this is uh, the village of Clayton. Um, Clayton Dollar General or Clayton DG LLC is proposing um, a Dollar General store, which we, we've seen before the request for the signage variances. Um, that they were denied. Um, and then we also saw a minimum lot frontage size uh, referral that was tabled. And then this is for the uh, minimum lot size for the Dollar General. And as, as we, we saw a, a few months ago, this project is located on, um, it's on what's the name of that street, Grave Street which is here and the access will be from Grave Street. And then it, we're seeing it because it's along Route 12, the property is along State Street in Clayton. Um, and um, <clears throat> so this is the um, site. I think I took this a few months ago and this is generally where the entrance will, will come off of Grave Street um, and there's a hill. They'll be kind of carving out this hill, but this is the site. And then to the left here is the, the bank. I forgot to mention. So community bank is here and um, you can see a number of homes along Grave Street, but this, this is zoned industrial. So um, it is allowed. Then this is a shot from Graves uh, sort of back here across the site where, and you see the, the bank next door. Um, then this is from route 12 where that small strip of the, their land abuts Route 12, but this will only have a sign on it as we saw previously. So this is the site plan they submitted before. Um, the site, the parcel is just under the required lot size by a few hundred feet. Um, and recently they discovered that um, the village zoning law does have a section on non-conforming lots of record. So um, that's that's our second comment is they should determine whether that uh, clause in their zoning law applies to this property. And then the other sort of a typical comment is that in reviewing the area variance, the local board should consider the benefit to the applicant as weighed against the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community using the five factors for an area variance as stated in New York State Village Law. Um, so that, that's what we had on, on that one. Any questions, comments? Okay, so this is a local concern only, right, Andy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, the All right. staff has made a recommendation that this is a project of local concern only and with our comments to be returned to the applicant. I'll make that motion for a second. I'll second it, Charlene. Who was that? Charlene. Charlene, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that goes back to the, the Clayton. Okay, uh, who's up for Watertown City area variance? That would be Sarah. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Okay, let's see, what can you see now? Local city map and an area photo. All right, let's see. What about now? Just the town or the city of Watertown map. All right, let's try that. Okay, okay. this is an area variance for Taco Bell, um, which you probably all know where that's located. But anyways, it's near the corner of South Bellu Ave and Arsenal Street, which is technically Route 3, State Route 3 in this area. Um, here's Arsenal. There's Bellow Ave South. Um, here's Walgreens. And then this is Taco Bell. 
Um, they're in for an area variance to reduce the required landscaping buffer area um, along the east property line. It's supposed to be a minimum of five feet wide and they're pr proposing to have zero feet of buffer area at some sections. Um, the surrounding land uses are all commercial. Uh, the site is zoned commercial, which allows a restaurant with site plan review. And we just reviewed this last month um, to go over the modifications, which we'll get to in a second. This is a photo from Google. Um, you can see the existing drive lane, uh, drive through lanes are right here, and the drive, you know, the passer lane is here. There's a guardrail along the property line, and this is pretty much the property line. You can see there's no landscaping right now, so the buffer as it exists today is not being met. Um, next photo, this is in the back. I was going around the drive through making that turn where you get the, the order, the menu order. This is Walgreens, the backside of Walgreens. You can see the guardrail is way back here. Again, there is no landscaping as it is existing today. This is the site plan. Um, the, you went over the proposed changes last month, basically to add the um, call ahead, the order online lane and the new drive lanes. It's gonna have an extra lane there. It's being reconfigured. Pretty much everything below this yellow line represents new or extensions of the drive lanes. And again, above the line, they have zero feet of landscape buffer and they're proposing to have zero feet of landscape buffer. That's why they need the area variance in this area. Um, in terms of comments, we have the normal um, county state comment that says in reviewing the area variance, the local board should consider the benefit to the applicants as weighed against the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community using the five factors for an area variance as stated in New York City law. Um, any questions on this one? Lisa, do you need to abstain? Well, this one goes to the Zoning Board of Appeals, not the City Council. No, just, just asking if she needs to abstain. Mm -hmm. I would I would defer to Mr. Sly. <laughs> but okay. all right. You're, he's muted. You're muted. She does not right. need to abstain. Then then Thank staff, you. All right. Staff has made recommendation that this is a project of local concern only, with our comment to be returned to the applicant or the local agency. Make that motion. Is there a second? Somebody? I'll second, Dave. Okay, Deb. thank you. Thank you, Deb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we've gotten those four issues out of the way. Now we're okay. going to... Excuse me. What? Did, Lisa, did Lisa abstain on that? No, she did not no, need to. No, I voted. Not. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to Sport Island. And again, please follow Mr. Borsi's uh, ground rules as far as uh, who can speak and those type of things. Go ahead, Andy. Okay. Um, so are you seeing the whole town here? Yes. Okay. So this project is proposed by Sport Island Holdings for a resort. And I will get into more specifics on that, but at this point, I'm calling it a resort. Uh, it is a site plan review use in the Marine Residential Zoning District. So it is allowed with this review process. And um, we're seeing it because of its proximity to the Canadian border or also the, the edge of the town of Alexandria. Um, oh, I forgot. So we did get a number of um, letters and uh, emails and so on and so forth about the project. And we, we count that as correspondence. And um, normally we cover that at the beginning, but th this is actually, um, you know, we got quite a bit more than we usually get. So 
I thought I would just briefly summarize some of the issues um, as you read through the letters. And as I said, I, I sent most of them that we received in a timely manner onto the board members for their, their um, ability to read them. So um, there were, I Andy, think over 30, yes? Go ahead with the description of the project and we'll acknowledge those letters, but uh, they can be uh, taken as comments. But let's look, find out what the project is right now. Okay, sure. So uh, as I said, the Canadian border is um, the reason we're seeing it. And it's about uh, three or 400 feet from, from, the pro from the edge of the island to the Canadian border. So that's within the 500 feet that would trigger it. So uh, stepping back from, you know, the narrow view of the island, you know, you can see from this map um, that the village of Alexandria Bay is here. Um, Bow Castle is here. So Bow Castle is about two miles from the project. And um, Wellesley Island is here. Um, Crane Point State Park is, is across just downriver. That's that's another landmark for you. Um, this is Grenadier Island in Canada. There's a number of Canadian islands, I would say in, in somewhat close proximity, um, but most of the islands nearby are, are in America. Um, and <clears throat> there's a reference to the Summerland group of islands. I actually don't know if that includes these islands here, the eight or nine here, or if it includes Douglas and Lotus, I don't really know, but anyway, just so that you, you know, it's in this area, um, okay? So as part of the resort, um, we did get a, a written description of the project scope from the applicant's engineer. Um, now, I don't know if this is with the town yet, if they've seen this description, but just so you know. Um, so the resort would include sort of three main target market areas. Um, so uh, there, there's a single family rental aspect to the project consisting of the six existing dwelling units, uh, sort of a VRBO style with, with amenities. Then the next uh, focus area would be using the entire island um, rented by someone for corporate style retreats, family gatherings, team building seminars, et cetera, using the 24 bedrooms with amenities. Um, the third area of focus would be events such as weddings, family reunions, or corporate outings would also include amenities provided um, with outside support uh, with potential catering and temporary bathroom facilities. The event would occur around and on the existing 5,000 square foot patio area as shown on the site plan. And we're, we'll get to the site plan. So each one of those includes amenities. So the next description are the amenities themselves. So it would include a small social bar facility or, or a tiki bar with elevated deck professionally run to cater to guests during private events, but also to support island rental guests. Uh, a pickleball court and basketball court, those are one and the same. I think you just um, use it differently. Uh, the water activities um, would include kayaks, water sports, floating. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, large patio with pool and hot tub. Um, powered boats, slips for island guests, and boat rentals for, rentals for island guests. Um, so now I'm going to go back and describe the area again. Um, so as we kind of narrow our focus on the area, um, this is the project location, Sport Island, which also includes Little Lehigh Island and Picnic Island, this very small island. Um, and these are connected with bridges. You can see the bridge here. Um, and then there's a smaller one here as well. And just so you know, you know, Douglas Island is, is here, Lotus Island, Ina or Ina Island, Sunnyside Island, uh, Idlewild is a little less than 400 feet away from Lehigh. Um, Summerlin Island is a little less than 500 feet away. And we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Arcadia Island, um, Little Channel Island, 
and Sylvan Island. We've gotten letters from, I believe, all of those. Um, and, and they can speak for themselves as well, but I'm just sort of noting. Um, so this drawing is from the applicant and it's showing the Canadian border and then the actual measurements from the other islands that are close by. Um, so as I said, Idlewild is 375 feet away, um, so on and so forth. Summerland is 494 feet. So th these are um, what I would consider to be the, uh, the neighborhood of the project. Um, I did a site visit and I, I will get, it, get to that in a moment. So this is the last aerial I'm gonna show. Um, these are the islands again, and you can see that these are existing uh, homes, boathouses, and, and some docks, um, not very many. Uh, and then there's some pathways there now, or, or when this image was taken in 2020. Um, and you can see the nearby um, seasonal homes and properties, uh, you know, relatively close to this island. I, I didn't show the other two to the south um, in this image, but you know you, you get the idea. Um, so this image was submitted by an opponent. Just just be, it shows how close their dock is to, and how how close they they're looking at this um, uh, sport island. Okay, and in the background is Little Lehigh, and Picnic Island is here with the grass on it. Um, and I'm going to keep going. So this, I did a site visit uh, Sunday with, with Sarah. So we both um, were able to get to the island uh, area, neighborhood. So here's here's Little Lehigh Island, which has one house on it and a boathouse. And we'll get into the number of bedrooms when we do the site plan. Um, but then this is Sport Island, as I mentioned, and Picnic Island now has this flagpole on it for, for reference. It's, it's mainly a, a grass uh, island at this point in time. Um, now this shot, uh, I sort of reoriented showing how close Summerlin Island is to Sport Island and Picnic Island. You can see Arcadia in the background. So you can see how, you know, how they relate to each other, the, the, the island. And this is the front of my boat. I kept that for reference whenever I could. Um, so this is uh, focusing on the other end um, or the other side. So Little Lehigh and then Idlewild. And those are actually, those two islands are closer than Sport and um, Summerlin. Just again, as a reference to, to understand the area. Um, so here we are zooming a little bit closer to Little Lehigh and you can see the house there and the uh, boathouse. And um, this is the end of sport. So here I kind of back out a little bit showing mostly sport island and picnic island and little Lehigh's in the background. They're connected via this bridge. Um, <clears throat> and you can see the bow house on sport island and the um, mansion, the, the, the biggest house on the island. And as we kind of move down the island, down river, you can see the, the uh, 10 bedroom mansion and the bridge to Picnic Island. And this along here somewhere is where one of the docks is being proposed. Okay, I, I can't draw that because I couldn't do the scale correctly. Um, but this building here is where the Tiki Bar will be located. And they'll add a, a patio. That's part of the project is adding a patio. Okay, so moving down the island some more, um, this is a 10 bedroom uh, house and uh, Picnic Island and Picnic Island is, is proposing to have a dock along the length of it. Um, this is one of the docks that's there now. I'm not sure exactly when it was um, constructed. And this is where that Tiki Bar uh, building is going to be. Um, <clears throat> Moving down a little more, there's the Tiki Bar. Uh, this is a two bedroom uh, boathouse that exists. Um, this is a five bedroom house that is there. Uh, this is the, I believe a three bedroom caretakers um, house. And then back here is, is a one bedroom ice house, what they're calling it. And those names are just for reference. 
Um, so as I said, I'm going to keep moving down the island here and you can see again the caretaker's house, the five bedroom house and the boat house. Um, so now we've drifted below the island and come back around. Um, so this is that caretaker's house. So now I'm, I'm toward Canada facing back toward the um, easterly direction. So um, then, so this is that five bedroom house, tiki house or tiki bar building, one bedroom ice house. Um, and then this is the mansion. Now this is the patio area behind, which again, you'll see a site plan in a moment. Um, so, oh yeah. So this is on this side of the um, retention wall will be the temporary bathroom and they'll be screened from view from the east on the drawing they're showing. So the Summerlin group will not see them if the uh, tree, uh, if the buffer is, you know, planted and so on. Um, okay. And then as I move upriver, in this case, again, the 10 bedroom uh, mansion and there's a sort of a wraparound porch around the entire front and two sides. Um, okay, so here we're, uh, let's see, where are we? Oh yeah, so this is Fort Island here and this is Little Lehigh, just to give you an idea um, what it looks like today or Sunday. And this is, I we came through under the bridge. This is Little Lehigh. Um, this is a, now I'm forgetting how many bedrooms, but I think a three bedroom house or um, Mr. LaSalle can correct me if I'm wrong. This is a, a, an existing boat house. Uh, last, this is our last shot. So this is uh, facing down river at the, at the head of Sport Island, just to show you that um, the largest house. And again, the patio will be on, on the front of it. No, I'm sorry, the patio will be on the back. Yeah. So um, here's the original site plan we, we got from the applicant and it shows a number of amenities. It, it was hard to color this in. So I actually requested one without the aerial. So I'm gonna present the one without an aerial on it. So here's the site plan minus the aerial photograph. And again, we're, we're seeing a 10 bedroom house here with the wraparound porch that's existing. Um, a two bedroom boat house here that's existing, five bedroom house here with a porch, the one bedroom ice house existing, uh, and then the caretaker cottage, three bedroom here. Then, uh, yeah, so this house on Little Lehigh is three bedrooms. And so the pink items are being proposed. So that is the basketball pickleball court here, um, a water sports building a storage building here, um, the temporary bathroom facilities as required with that screening that I mentioned, uh, you know, facing um, it toward Summerland Island. And then the patio is stated to exist now and they're adding a pool and a hot tub. And uh, this pathway here is new, the stone walkway that would connect to Picnic Island and, and this dock, as well as this dock here. And then um, the Tiki Bar is here. Uh, and then they to complete that use, they would add the um, proposed patio here. Um, this dock is, is there now surrounding the boathouse. So it would be extended here. And then these finger docks uh, would have um, you know, the, the 110 feet out and then the fingers to, to tie up to, um, to add more boat capacity. Same with this one here. Um, so uh, also they're showing ex existing uh, sanitary facilities and leach fields um, here for most of the homes. It's not shown for this. I, I just sort of assume it's there. Um, but again, the uh, Engineer can speak to that, Mr. LaSalle. And I'm trying to think if I'm in their verbiage, they were describing um, 
a place to uh, swim that's protected in here, like a small beach. Um, so like a family oriented swimming area there. And this, this pathway exists, um, I think. And <clears throat> okay, so are there any questions so far from the uh, board members? Yeah, Andy, this is David. Uh, is the entire island, the two islands, under one ownership? Um, yes, Port okay. Island LLC. Okay, so so all these buildings exist, and there's one person that owns them, or what, one corporation that owns them, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Okay. Brad. And Andy, Andy, this is Cliff. I've got a question. Uh, how many, uh, you can see how many bedrooms, I, I'd like to know with the dockage, how many, uh, how many berths are there? Well, uh, I believe the applicant stated about 30. So you've got, you've got more than enough, you got, you got an excess of berths of dock compared to the bedrooms on, uh, for, uh, on the uh, houses on the island. So you have more, more dock space than you really need. Because probably you're not going to have a boat for each person that's going to go there, right? Well, so there's, there's an excess, it seems as though there's an excess of dockage for, for the housing right. uh, and rental that they've got on there. So about 30 mm -hmm. docks. Okay, thanks. Sure. I, I will say that they were indicating the amenities. So providing the services and amenities would take more staff. And I, you know, kind of assume some of them will be arriving on boat. So you know, I think that's where part of that comes in. Any other questions by the board members? Okay, so I think now we would open it up to the um, project engineer to fill in if I forgot anything or wants to clarify. Excuse me, Mike, Mike did you want um, uh, the attorney to address his concerns now or wait until after the more description from the engineer? Well, I, I thought we'd give the engineer an opportunity to fill in anything that Andy may have said. Okay. All right. Your comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mike LaSalle here. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I think Andy did a great job. He got most of uh, everything. Um, I think uh, the dock question is good. We do show, you can see, we show proposed dock locations of 22 berths there on the two main new docks. Um, the other docks, that right there, yep. So that's kind of the main area where we anticipate a lot of the uh, the transient rentals would be parking. Um, and then where those other spots are coming from is that um, 100, and, I believe it's 150 foot uh, pier on the left. That would be considered more of a service dock uh, for emergencies as well. So one side of that dock would be left for uh, fire boats or emergency access uh, and whatnot. And that's a good spot for uh, service boats to pull in for whether it be a party or whatever. Um, the boathouse is existing, obviously, where number two is that two bedroom boathouse, and that has a couple slips inside of it. So I think that's where the 30 number comes from. But again, the 22 is really the focus, um, but that could include uh, potentially a pontoon boat rental, anything like that could be part of that too. So uh, and then the only other thing I want to add was the tiki bar, tiki bar uh, is the is a term we're using, but it's really uh, that's the old um, billiards room. It used to be the old entertaining area, um, cigar room type thing. It's a very neat structure. It's that's where all the, the artifacts have kind of been displayed and very original in there, and you know the history of the island is located around that that building. So that's why it's we're we're kind of turning that into the focus point of the island, like kind of a gathering place for uh, the people that might be renting the island. That would be kind of a center point gathering place with the billiards room, uh, the piano, auto play piano that they've restored, all that is in that specific specific location. So uh, I think other than that, I think Andy really has captured everything uh, to that regard. So, we can. Okay. So, Mike, this is Cliff Schneider uh, again. Uh, so, you're, you're, this project, you're not requesting any uh, variance, any requests for variance with use or, uh, or area variance at all, are you? No, no variance at all. It's just a site plan review. Right. 
All right, Andy, do you want to uh, summarize the the letters that we've received from uh, others who are not the applicant? Uh, sh sure, sure. Um, and again, <clears throat> I don't. We, we couldn't say everything, but just generally. Uh, there are a number of issues and themes that came up, so I, I'll just go over that quickly. Um, so, then it's not in any specific order, but um, they a, a lot of them noted incompatible land use in the neighborhood, with residential to commercial. You know, there'd be conflicts and, and so on with that. Um, and they cite the tiki bar, the amount of docks, the impact of events. Um, then uh, boating safety, number of boats in the area, potentially drunk boaters, large boats. Uh, would, if, if they pump out things into that, into the water there, that wouldn't be good uh, for the environment. Um, recreational safety, um, there's a, there are a lot of swimmers in the area, kayakers, inner tubes, uh, boats that raft in the area now, you know, they either tie up or they, they drift or whatever. So they're citing that that use is very prevalent uh, now um, and could conflict with the events and, and, and the additional traffic. Uh, event issues, uh, any number of event issues that were mentioned, such as noise, light, septic, uh, boat safety, uh, police and fire protection, they were brought up. Um, inadequate seeker information uh, was, was brought up. Um, environment, other environmental issues, impact on fish by dock expansion, um, possible bonfires. Um, the number of them were noting the burning of debris from the house renovation has been a, an ongoing thing, and that's concerning given the lack of fire protection in the area. And not that there's a lack, but potentially a delay with getting a fireboat from Clayton or, or Alex Bay or wherever they come from, just that that's uh, something they were talking about. Um, if approved, really no control on, on the use. Um, they were saying that uh, septic system concerns, um, the need for porta potties for events. So their argument is, well, is that really a good idea? Um, and how do you make sure that they are handled correctly? Um, border enforcement with being so close to Canada, um, that's another issue raised. Property values, uh, which could decline it nearby, um, that's what they were saying. Um, burning of debris and, and open fires. And then ongoing, um, will there be fire pits with the project? Um, so that's a really quick rendition of the over 30 pieces of communication. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to add that um, just for the uh, other people on the call that copies of all the correspondence that we were provided um, were provided um, to the County Planning Board members. So it, it wasn't, they weren't just hearing the, the summary of all the concerns um, that were put forth. They did have the opportunity to actually read all those letters and copies of the emails. I think, uh, Andy, I think uh, one of the public has a question because Steve Wood raised his hand. Um, okay. Is that what that means? Uh, let me. Okay. Well, Mr. Mr. Wood, ra raise your issue now, then, or your question, please. Um, hit star six to unmute yourself. Well, we, we can ask. Okay, him later. Andy, why don't you go ahead with um, your the project review comments? Okay. So um, let's see. So here, here are the comments, um, and we, we usually have the recommendation on the same sheet, but it, it was longer, so we have it on a separate sheet. 
Um, but so the first comments deal with county and state issues. Um, the applicant should contact the Jefferson County Fire Prevention and Building Code Department to determine what building permits are required for the project, including house renovations. Increasing capacity would require the building code to be met. Um, the, I'm going to just keep going. The applicant should coordinate with the New York State Department of Health as soon as possible to ensure any use beyond residential will have adequate septic systems meet requirements for a food service permit, uh, potable water supply as applicable, pool and hot tub use beyond residential, uh, and fire safety requirements for the buildings that may also apply. Um, also under the town's adopted local waterfront revitalization program plan, a consistency assessment form should be completed to ensure the project aligns with the town of Alexandria's waterfront consistency review law policy. Um, the proposed docks require a permit from New York, New York State DEC and or U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, then we had a few um, local comments. Uh, when deliberating on this proposal, the local board should consider the neighborhood in close proximity to the three islands, which is predominantly a collection of seasonal homes. The proposed large gatherings, such as weddings and corporate retreats, as well as a tiki bar, may introduce daytime and nighttime noise, glare, entertainment, and boat traffic beyond what would normally be expected by seasonal residences. The local board should request a more detailed description of the proposed resort for its consideration. This would include the proposed uses, new structures, expected number of guests, boat traffic levels, number of events per season, quiet hours, and whether fire pits would be proposed. Um, and we say that because we've got this description from the applicant. Um, we we want to make sure that they have any description that makes it more clear um, for them to consider. Uh, moving on, the resort criteria in the zoning law addresses only a limited number of impacts when compared to the project description. The local board should ensure the project consistency uh, with the town zoning laws site plan criteria, which states adequate protection of adjacent, or in this case nearby, properties from noise, glare, unsightliness, or other objectionable features from conflicting uses, and all uses complement each other and not be offensive to the district or adjacent areas uses. So those two criteria are in the town zoning law. And um, usually when you hear the word adjacent, you think of a property adjacent, like connecting to it. But in, in this case, we feel that the neighborhood it is separated by water, but it's still what we think is as a neighborhood and should um, those criteria should apply. To address potential noise, quiet hours could be established. Similarly, any proposed lighting should be dark sky compliant and limit fixtures producing direct or indirect glare towards nearby residential islands. The local board should consider the locations and number of boat slips. For example, the 110 permanent docks may impact the river between the islands as this dock placement and orientation may impact the already narrow area between the islands. Um, the proposed temporary bathroom facility should be completely screened, which, which we're, we're saying screened from the Port Island side as well as the Canadian side of the island. Um, the seeker form, which is the State Environmental Quality Review Act uh, submitted with the application appears to be missing a complete description and include some inconsistent statements when looking at the application and site plan. The local board should review the seeker form to determine if more information is needed. Uh, they should determine that whether a full EAF, which is a full environmental assessment form, may be required. Without a full project description and detailed scope of the project activities, uh, the local board cannot adequately judge whether significant environmental impacts may occur, which is what Seeker is designed to do. 
Um, a coordinated review with the other involved agencies, such as New York State Department of Health, New York State DC, US Army Corps of Engineers, County Code Office should be utilized. Um, and lastly, the local board should consider each of the proposed activities and determine the scope of potential impacts on the neighborhood. The local board can then identify mitigating actions. If approval is considered, the local board should be specific as to what uses are approved or allowed and any conditions or restrictions they may place on the project to limit potential neighborhood impacts. Um, so those were our um, project um, comments or issues. Mr. Sly, you wanna speak now? Mr. Sly, your microphone's not on. Sorry about that. There you go. Sorry about that. There Andy, you go. Andy, do you have the largest scale chart that I provided to you that would show the smallest area? I can show you which one it is just by holding it up to the camera. I, I have it. I think it was at the beginning. Well, no, you had one that was the smaller scale, which means larger area. Do you have the, do you oh. have the one that zooms in even for, even closer? Um. It's not in the PowerPoint. I can try to grab it. I'd like the board to take a look at it, please. Okay, yes, just a moment. Sure. It's gonna take me a second. That's okay. Um, what what day did you send that? I can tell you in a second. Oh, what day did I email it to you? <laughs> yeah. I don't have that in front of me, and I'm afraid if I signed out to try to find it, I'd never get back on the darn computer again. It, no. Um, it was probably uh, within the last week, I would think. Yeah. I... It was in here, but then I, I took it out. Yeah. Um, well, just a moment. It's important for the board to see the relative location of these islands uh, up close and personal. Right. So the, um, uh, so the, this one isn't good enough? No. No, I, no the thing okay. about the nautical chart is it kind of gives you a, a real clue as to what everything's labeled, how they're laid out, everything. And it orients you to right. north. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. I'm going to grab that now from your email. Okay. Just Thanks. give me a few more seconds. Sure. Sure. Excuse me. This is Sarah. Can I just interject something right now while Andy's looking for that um, exhibit? Uh, there's been a number of people that have entered the presentation in the last like 20 minutes. Um, if these people want to speak, could they please um, state that in the chat box? Because right now, after Mr. Sly is done speaking, um, I do have two other people that might be interested in speaking. Um, that would be Adam Burke and Alan Hannaford. If there are other people that are interested in speaking, please indicate in the chat box so that... Um, we will know that in advance. Thank you. I apologize. This for this taking long. I, I'm an old Coast Guard guy, so I'm used to charts. Yeah. Well, Andy, I, Andy. I just I believe I just scanned that and emailed it to you. If that's easier for you to grab. Oh, okay. It hasn't come yet. <laughs> and Andy, didn't the, didn't the board see it though? I believe we received the nautical charge via email. Um, you you may have. Um, so Mike, you scan so. the whole thing. All right. I, okay, I'll, I'll get it now. So. 
This is modern technology. You got to email something to the guy at the desk next to you. Yeah. So, okay, hold on. I, I need to make a new slide. What was that one? That was the, that was the other one. one. Next to smallest scale, or next to largest scale. There you go. Right. There you go. Now you got okay, to I have to crop it. Return it, yeah. Yeah, I, this is different. Almost. Well, it it came through as a PDF. They're not as they're not as good for us. But can you turn it, maybe? Yeah, I'll try. Export will be on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, it's a PDF, so it, you can't. Um, sorry, Mike. He's on a JPEG. <laughs> Um, I can't rotate it either. It doesn't like PDFs. See, I, I can't click these. Normally you can. That's where the rotation is. So, um, the reason I asked is that one of the first comments made was it was kind of hard to tell what the Summerland group was. That is the Summerland group. If you can turn it 90 degrees. Yeah. Okay. I, I have an idea. Okay. So I will zoom in on this. Okay. So it's basically the same thing. Um, okay. So that's. Here you All go. Right. There you go. Bingo. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm all set. Thanks. All right. Uh, yeah, Mr. Prosser, members of the board, I, I recognize I have a face for radio, but you're kind of stuck with me. So, uh, but thank you for your time, if only for a moment. I know you've had a full agenda. Uh, my name is Bob Sly. I'm an attorney representing the residents of the Summerlane Group, which is located in the town of Alexandria. That's Sport Island, Idlewild, uh, Sunnyside, Ina, Summerland, and uh, Arcadia Islands. I have some very brief comments on the proposed site plan. So I urge you to look at the chart that's up there. It tells the story much better than I can. No set of islands in the North Country is as quaint and undisturbed as the Summerland Group. And that group is as much a residential neighborhood as any other neighborhood in the North Country. We just heard Andy refer to that, with one exception. They all share the same front yard. Yet the site plan before you proposes to establish resort uses in that front yard. Indeed, approval of this site plan would make every island of the Summerland Group a part of the resort, rather than keeping Sport Island as part of the residential neighborhood. I'm going to say that again, because approval of this site plan would make every island of the Summerland Group a part of the resort, rather than keeping Sport Island as part of the residential neighborhood. You know, it's interesting to me that they talk about the uses that they plan to use the island, Sport Island and Little Lehigh for. Nothing's going to control the people who go there as to how they intend to use their time in the Summerland group. And they're going to use that common area that's in the middle. So please think about that. This site plan suggests an entire upheaval of the residential neighborhood for the benefit of the developers. And it's proposed to be established only 300 feet from the Canadian border. And that's why the matter is before you. The site plan proposes 443 feet of new dockage. Three of those docks would extend more than 110 feet into the protected inner and common area of the islands. Not to the open waters to the north of Sport Island, but to everyone's front yard. Each of the protruding docks, protruding docks contains fingers for dockage. In total, those docks would support 33 larger boats of up to 30 foot in length. Is that in any way consistent with a residential neighborhood? Of course not. It's a marina. It's a marina. And people are going to be sleeping on those boats. They're not just going to be tucked away very quietly in their bedrooms of these mansions. They're going to be sleeping on their yachts that they pull up to the marina. Now, 239L of the General Municipal Law requires this board review countywide considerations in respect to the, quote, protection of community character as regards predominant land uses 
and the relation between residential and non-residential uses. That's 239L2 subdivision D. So what is this board's view of the protection of community character associated with the Thousand Islands? What are the predominant land uses? You already know you live here. The islands are filled with quaint, picturesque, single family homes. This site plan represents anything but that. And what about the relation between residential and non-residential uses? There cannot be sound barriers erected across the water. There cannot be fences or yard setbacks to prevent resort uses from interfering with the uses associated with the single family homes in this neighborhood. This would not be a resort on an island. It would be a resort on six islands, Sport, Idlewide, Sunnyside, Ina, Summerland, and Arcadia. So yes, the County Planning Board can make a recommendation. This is not of local concern only. Among the recommendations that you can make lies in the statutory authority to recommend disapproval of the site plan, which would allow a resort of this magnitude to ruin an island neighborhood. There may well be over 1,000 islands, but few present the island community character we've all come to love and cherish. This character has come to define a significant part of the North Country as a whole. We love the Thousand Islands. We all say we love them. This is going to destroy one of those neighborhoods. So on behalf of the remaining neighbors in this island group and as a legitimate county concern, we ask that that character be preserved for future, for future generations. The Summerland group, this unique neighborhood with a unique character, should not be allowed to be ruined by this planned resort. Therefore, we ask that you recommend disapproval of this site plan by the local planning board. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any questions? You see, if this site plan is approved, they can say they're going to limit their uses, but they will, they're entitled to have any use allowed under the zoning ordinance. So they, they talk a good story, but if you approve this site plan, any site plan use that falls within the town zoning law is fair game, regardless of what they say. Now. Mr. Sly, how, how do you feel that uh, the site plan as presented uh, would include those other islands there? Uh, could as it I not said, be limited to just the, the larger sport island? My, my point was that it's everybody's front yard, that whole central area. That's why I wanted this chart put up. That's the common area for all. They didn't decide to put their, their uh, docks on the north side of the island into the open water towards Canada. They put them in where? Where it's most protected, where it's protected by all the islands. That's, and that is a common area of all these neighbors. And it's used by all the neighbors. So that's why I say <laughs> that you know, that it affects everybody and that that is the neighborhood. The front yard's part of the neighborhood. It's the entire character of the place, which we say is going to be dissolved if that becomes a resort. What are those uh, purple lines that uh, kind of zigzag to, to the those island are, and other places? Those are underwater cables. Okay. Mr. Mr. Sly, is, uh, does town law allow for a resort in the, in the Marine res Residential District? As a site plan review use, it does. It also allows a marina as a site plan review use, but you can impose special use conditions upon a marina, not on a resort. I, I know there were some comments where people were saying don't allow the, uh, I believe, don't allow uh, you know, resorts to be uh, included or... Uh, in the, in the town law, I, I, I took a look at it. I think it still is. It, it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. yeah. But it's got to be site plan approval, which means it has to have an approved site plan, which is why we're opposing which it. Which means, and, and people make comments and they have concerns, and exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Do any other county planning board members have uh, questions for Mr. Sly? Uh, if not, I would just like to say one thing about um, one of the comments that that Bob made about if 
if, again, this is a, if at the local level, this is approved as a site plan review that then the applicants can take that approval and, and do what they want there. I, I would disagree with that if the town, it, it, again, if the town does an approval with this, they can attach conditions to that approval. And what, what one of the things that we will we commented on is that if, again, you're using that word because I don't know what the town was going to do on this, but if, if the town were to look at doing a approval of this, they can be very specific on what they are approving. So that would sit with that property as, as long as what they're doing um, meets all of those, you know, uh, conditions which can be which can be what types of uses and and restrictions on the types of uses that they may allow on there and what, what that means is in the future if they you know go to maybe you know do a say a marina like is defined in the the zoning law where it's more of a commercial operation not not a use associated with another use um, the, the town would be able to come back and say, look, that was not part of our original approval of your site plan. So you are out of compliance to that, our approval. Therefore, you have to stop doing whatever use they're doing that wasn't part of the original approval. And you have to go through the review process again for any additional, you know, use that they may propose in, in the future. So I just, I just want our board sort of to, to understand that just, you know, giving site plan approval doesn't necessarily mean, you know, car, carte blanche for anything that is listed under site plan review or that opens it up to whatever may be listed currently under, you know, like a, a resort, uh, the, the definition in, in that. The local board, which we often tell local boards is you should be very specific in what you're approving, be it site plan or special use permit. So it's down and it's in writing exactly what the applicant is being approved to conduct on the island. So then if anything is done in the future that doesn't meet that, then the board can go back and say, look, we, we have this, you know, official motion that was done approving it and it lists X, Y, and Z. And now you're want to do one, two, and three, which is different. And you, you can't do that without approval. Okay. Well, uh, I will, yeah, it sounds like I'm arguing against myself here, Mike, but I do disagree with you on that because certainly if you have special use permit issues, you can issue special use permits to govern certain uses. But let's say that the, well, I'll just pick a simple example. Let's say that the resort thing says you can have a restaurant. All right, and you're telling me that the planning board can say you can have everything but a restaurant. We're not going to let you have a restaurant. I don't see how. You can no, I no. I'm saying that their approval would be for only a restaurant. It wouldn't be for anything else that may be listed as a site plan review use in that district. So it's not that they're giving them approval for site plan review uses. They're giving an approval for a specific site plan review use. Well, that, yeah, I didn't mean to, I was only using the site plan review use as an example. There are no site plan review uses for a resort. All right, so any, you're telling me that the planning board can impose conditions on what allowed uses they're going to allow and what they're not? For, for a resort, the, they've applied for a resort use and the local board can you know put be specific on what they're allowing as part of the resort district or okay. sorry resort use yeah again i don't want to argue against myself that'd be a good uh, argument over a cup of coffee someday mike okay <laughs> okay <laughs> or something stronger but uh yeah it seems to me the issue is uh, not the fact that people are going to occupy those buildings and, and live there for a uh, two weeks or four days or whatever it is that they're going to be there, but it's the additional ancillary uses as uh, uh, a venue for weddings or uh, those type of things. 
it seems to me that that seems where the issue is. Uh, there doesn't seem to be the objection to people occupying those buildings. It's just additional uh, either use as a bar or restaurant, those type of things. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, it doesn't say restaurant, but uh, uh, that should be indicated that uh, those rooms go without a restaurant. Well, I, th I think our concern is the additional 33 to 35 boats that can tie up and have extra berths on them that don't necessarily have to stay in the rooms. There's no indication that they're going to limit those persons to living in those houses. So rather than 34 beds or whatever, now we've got 75 beds. Now we've got all kinds of people on boats. Oh, you're concerned with people living on their boat there. Yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm just saying that it, it makes it sound like it's a smaller thing, but when you add all those boats and the number of people it can hold, it, it's a much bigger operation than what it seems. It's you know, I, I tend to agree with what Dave was saying, because originally when Andy was presenting, he talked about the different clientele, and he talked about uh, the family units, the BBR style. Well, that, that was the history of that island. That was the history of how that was used. And, and Dave is right. I don't think anyone would be of concern with how that's used in that way, or if it's used as a family reunion or so. But what you're getting at, and, and I agree, is the concern over the, the additional uses. And a lot of that is tied to the dockage. And I think that's something that the, uh, the, the local board, the town board in Alexandria could use to try to control some of the, some of the use uh, that could be there. And, and that is to take a good look at, at the dockage and, and how that's going to be used. And yes, I think the concern is probably from a lot of people are going to be the events with a lot of people. There's going to probably be concerned with if all of a sudden it becomes a, uh, a site where uh, power boaters want to come flying in and have a drink and power up to the next bar or something like that. I, I can understand that, but, but historically it was used for family units and some of the, some of those uses and, uh, and it fits with the law and everything else. So I think it's a matter of what, what everyone was sort of saying is that the local board use some control and take a, a good hard look at how they want that to be used and, uh, and put some restraints on it. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Good. David, it's all right. If I add something to, um, yes, just tell you. I think, uh, and I think Bob makes some good points. I, I just want to be critical that the, the 22 slips there, um, the idea of an actual marina there wouldn't make a ton of sense for the developers. The, the intent is that to support those single family units, which would be very similar to any single family unit in any of the islands. Um, there's, there's actually single family units in the islands next door that have up to eight, 10, 12 slips on their island currently um, to support one single family unit. And I think that's why we didn't feel it was unreasonable to show those 22 slips for that use. And, and the idea of somebody sleeping on their boat, transient type marina users, um, it is, is, is it possible somebody might stay on their boat? Absolutely, just like any dock. But I think to actually run as a marina would be very tough on an island um, because uh, it, to, to have a seasonal slip on an island, you'd have to, a lot of people go in and out of the marinas with their vehicles, and I don't think that's going to ha happen here. So I think the idea of the marina will probably fall short of what the neighbors would be worried about, and I, I can understand that. You, you triple your capacity, but the idea that this is not being run as a marina, it's really a supporting of the single family structures and when there might be a gathering of a family reunion or potentially a wedding where there might be uses. but. The docks can't support a marina for multiple reasons because we don't have the sanitary facilities to support a 22 slip marina there to meet DEC standards and all that stuff. So I think that uh, we don't want that to be a big concern of people of having a marina, a full fledged marina there um, because I just don't think it works uh, economically or um, in the target of the, of the facility. Is there any other comments from the county planning board members? Okay, if not, I, I believe I've been keeping track from the chat section of uh, people who would like to speak. So I'm going to go down the list in order. I'll say your name and if you could please unmute yourself and, you know, uh, speak for you know, um, up to uh, five minutes, that would uh, be appreciated. If I call
call someone's name and after a little bit, I don't hear anything from them. I'll move on to the next name. And if you are having trouble unmuting yourself, then um, you can, uh, at the end, I'll open it up for any other people who uh, would like to uh, comment that didn't list their name. Uh, the first one up is Joe Lord. Mr. Lord, if you could unmute yourself and you may talk to the board. Uh, I'm going to pass. Okay. The, the next up then is a uh, Jeannie Flynn. Uh, Jeannie Flynn is uh, yielding her time. Okay. Then the next after that is a Lucinda Lord. She's, uh, we're all yielding our time. Okay. I, I assume you're, you're Hunter Lord? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, after the Lords, the next one was Adam Burke. Hi. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you uh, for this. I, I won't take five minutes, I don't think, because I think... Uh, uh, Bob Sly did a great job kind of explaining, you know, what our concerns are here. But I'm the owner of Idlewild Island, which is uh, one of the closest islands to this proposed project. Um, and I thought I'd just talk a little bit about the kind of neighborhood characteristics here and how we really feel like this is not something that's going to be consistent with our neighborhood. And it is the neighborhood. Um, so the distances here may sound like a lot, three or 400 feet, um, but the fact is we can hear things that are going on on the other islands. I can hear the dogs barking. I can hear conversations sometimes, depending on a kind of quiet night. I can uh, smell when people are cooking. These distances are really not what they seem. It's very close. Um, the last couple of years, you know, this construction has been going on over there. And we have been listening to that all summer for two summers. Backup beeping with heavy equipment, um, large excavators, hammering, all of that sort of thing. We've all kind of thought, okay, that's fine because this was our impression was, and we were been told that this was going to be fixing up these buildings to be sold as residential units. We're all very supportive of. Now we find out that this is not the case. This is going to be a resort, and by the looks of the plans, it looks like this was always what this was intended to be. They were trying to do what they could until it became time that they had to uh, show their hand here. So I really think, you know, this is something that's very inconsistent with this neighborhood. Um, and I think one thing that Bob pointed out, it is a very unique area. This is, you know, I mean, Jefferson County is very kind of blessed to have uh, the Thousand Islands within it. Right? This is a place that people come from all over the world to see. It's one of the most beautiful and uniquely beautiful places in the world. I've talked to a lot of people who have traveled throughout the world, and they have consistently said to me, this is one of the most incredible places they've seen. It's very short-sighted, I think, for a town within the county to say, you know what, let's start commercializing these islands. Let's, let's put docks all around them. Let's have big parties on them. That's not what attracts the world to come here and see these islands. It's, it's 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 squandering a very valuable and precious resource irreversibly. So I think that's those are my main points. I do feel like the other thing is I mean I've, I've sent a letter in. My points are there. Um, we're remote. We're very remote. We're up on the Canadian border. We're we're across the shipping channel. Any kind of thing that happens out there, it's not easy for people other than our immediate neighbors to really see what's going on. If they decide to have all night wedding receptions and parties and whatnot. And even if the town says, no, we don't want that sort of thing out there, there's no stopping them from doing it and then maybe getting a slap on the wrist. So we're all gonna be affected by this. Uh, it's a terrible idea for all the letters I put, all the reasons I put in my letter, but I just, uh, I wanted to, to, you know, express this to you being a very close neighbor here. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Um, the next one up is Alan Hanford. Yes, uh, yes, here I am. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you're giving us a couple minutes to talk about this. Um, I've got a, uh, a cottage uh, 
uh, on the opposite side of Summerland, but I'm still very concerned about this. Um, you know, we, we understood this to be a 24 bedroom, maybe 48 residents would be inhabiting this. But, uh, you know, we're worried about the, the economics of it will drive a lot of people to be there at one time. Obviously, weddings are the biggest venue for, for making money on these things. Um, you know, weddings typically have 150 to 200 people. Um, are they going to be able to uh, put temporary housing on there, tents, um, platforms, whatever? Um, I certainly hope that, that that's not going to happen. Um, <clears throat> already, we, we've uh, 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 seen many environmental violations. They've had uh, two or three burn piles of debris, which is uh, particularly forbidden by the EPA. Uh, there are currently now um, a couple of uh, significant piles there that we assume are, are ready to be burned. Um, the other one of the other uh, more detailed concerns is they started out as residential. Now they've gone commercial. Well, there's there's uh, obviously an overload potential of septic systems, which they may or may not be able to anticipate. Um, but uh, but the electrical and uh, the power distribution, the power usage can change dramatically with uh, uh, the large venue of, of the uh, pool deck and the tiki bar, the refrigeration needed for um, cooling beer, et cetera. Uh, the other thing that's going to be impossible is there's no chance there's going to be any buffering of sound. The tiki bar is facing Summerland Island. If it was at least facing Canada, we'd have a chance, but it's facing Summerland Island. They're going to have music on there. It's going to be people talking loudly, et cetera. Um, and that's on a high point of the island. They also talked about uh, buffering sound off of the off of the uh, deck area around the pool. Well, that has that that's right in the spine of the of the island, which is the highest point. You can't buffer that; it just doesn't happen. Um, and if you notice on the on the uh, map, uh, the the the, uh, the squiggly purple lines are the electrical feed. The electrical feed is coming off of Summerland Island. Um, I'm sure that nobody has, well, I'd be surprised if anybody has anticipated the load that'll come off of that because uh, there really hasn't been any load for a long time. And we've had, we've had fires out of that transformer before. Um, I guess those are, are my main concerns. Um, we hope that, uh, uh, that you would take those into account and, um, and, uh, Shall to try to help preserve what we've we've uh, been enjoying for 151 years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Hanford. Um, the next up is a uh, Melissa Mance Coniglio. Hi, um, I own Little Channel, and I would contest the lawyer and say that we are part of the Summerland Group, as is away from us, from it all, and Sylvan, which are the smaller islands that you're gonna see um, on your screen to the right. Um, we are very close to sport. Again, it doesn't look like that on the map, but it is significantly close to our island. We can hear it very well. Um, my question is, I have a 12 year old daughter who likes to swim off the back of our island right there. Um, and I'm wondering about how those boats are gonna get through to those 20 plus docks. Um, because you have to go through that little channel that's going to affect uh, Sylvan away from it all, Summerland and or Little Thailand and Arcadia. Um, the other way through is also right through between Arcadia and Summerland. So if you have people working, um, it's already a problem where we have people speeding through those gaps, uh, work people who are going to Sport Island. We've had problems with that already. So what is going to be the traffic uh, mitigation or report on this? Um, because the traffic will be so increased. I remember when um, Sport Island was used as a rental property. Um, and in my, my youth, they would rent it out to people who would live in the boathouse. Um, a lot of those people were pretty reckless. They would drive their jet skis around. And I remember one set of uh, a group that literally drove around the Summerland group of islands the whole entire day um, with a loud boat and were dangerous and reckless. So there is a precedent for 
that kind of behavior um, for people who are not invested in keeping this area the nice residential area that it should be and should remain. Um, definitely something that I'm very opposed to and I think you need to consider the islands off of Arcadia as part of the Summerland group because we do consider ourselves part of this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Then the next up is Phil Kerr. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I just wanted to comment as others have that originally this was being done as a residential development, redevelopment, uh, which had a lot of support. Uh, there's been a pivot to a commercial use here. And there's a very important specific technical or moron. Um, Michael, you commented that this could be conditioned in various ways or to do that. What's been requested is a site plan review to allow resort development, to allow resort use. Resort is defined in the uh, town code um, to allow a whole variety of commercial uses, including the words not limited to basically allowing unlimited commercial use. So the description by the developers, although is nice, is relatively meaningless if site plan review is granted. The only way resort is allowed in this zoning is with approval of site plan review. And uh, it is not my understanding, and it's a very important technicality that that involves a whole lot of conditions as well. That's why I think it's critical that this board recommend that the local board uh, deny site plan review for resort designation. Instead, uh, encouraging the developer to submit for a conditional use permit or some other approach if it's going to be specifically conditioned. And that's very important to say in this meeting that um, they can do that to plan board. That's not exactly true. It's very important distinction. I think it's critical that this board uh, recommend rejection of site plan review of resort, which allows any use, and suggest to the town that they instead take a different approach that allows very specific use conditions, if any commercial use at all. Again, this is a residential neighborhood. Um, Bob made the very important point that what this resort is trying to do is co-opt the common area for their benefit and financial benefit. This area, the resort extends beyond the island um, for water use out there. Um, and what that also means is this is not a local issue. Oh, if you allow this precedent, county Andy? precedent yes. here, it goes countywide, and you have to that, but it's on. But it's Your on chat Andy. is on the screen, Andy. Oh, okay, sorry. Can you still hear me? Yep. Yep. So, so this is not a local issue. If you allow unlimited commercial use, which the resort designation with site plan review allows, that precedent countywide to allow in residential neighborhoods on these islands across the St. Lawrence River, uh, commercial co-opting uh, of the surrounding area. Again, I think due to that, it's very important to reject or to recommend rejection of site plan review of resort approval to the town and encourage the town to pursue a different means that would not allow commercial use on this island but to significantly limit any specific use. Okay, the next up is Eli Smith. Hey everyone, can you see me? Yes. Hi, thank you so much for everyone for speaking. Um, I love it that the river runs in all their blood. I just had a few points I wrote down and my goodness, uh, everyone is so knowledgeable, I'm so impressed. 
Um, the one thing I thought of uh, that was brought up was about the people staying on the boats at the dock. Uh, the potential for people to be staying on a boat, um, something that I see working the Miami Boat Show. I live down in Key Largo, but believe me, everything on the walls um, is something of St. Lawrence. Um, they're probably going to dump their waste in the water. Uh, I would see that as a high potential factor. Um, over the years, uh, I love to snorkel, I love to dive. And something I've witnessed are samples being put out to collect uh, river samples downriver to see what kind of um, results they get back. So that's a concern to me. On top of the power lines, you're also running uh, phone lines to every island in the group. Um, and with Anchorage happening, um, we have to, I've actually at least a handful of times uh, traced our phone line, uh, which protrudes out into the middle of the Summerlin group um, and spliced it myself uh, so that we had a landline because we were picking up Canadian service on our cell phones. So that's something of concern. As far as the docks protruding out too, um, the sport used to be parked there, the original side wheeler to the island. Uh, the historic factor of that location where they're putting that long dock uh, and snorkeling, it's probably a foot and a half deep. I'm guessing all that river rock has been extracted. Um, there's a lot going on underwater as well, uh, which concerns me. Uh, again, you have a lot of knowledgeable people on here. I just wanted to at least throw my two cents out. So there they are. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, the next up is uh, Wilson Kerr. <clears throat> yes, hi. Can you hear me okay? Yes. So th I've heard some uh, some talk from the developer's representative about sort of minimizing and, and, and saying that this is residential and that's why there's so many slips. And, and uh, I'd like to, to also urge this board to urge the town to deny resort designation. It is nearly unenforceable. There are no uh, police nearby. There is no one to call. This is across a main shipping channel way out in the middle of the river. In fact, you can't get 300 feet farther out into the river without actually leaving the United States. This is about as beautiful a remote as place as possible. But regarding this issue of what is their intent, what I'd like to do for the board is read what the developer's website actually says. This is literally I'm reading from the website. And what it says is the following. Sport Island is a collaborative project to provide a vacation experience like none other in the region with a 24 bedroom capacity sport island has something for everyone amenities include a sandy beach cove bay for all swim levels 250 feet of dockage a snack shack tiki bar outdoor fire pit tennis and basketball court water sport launch point a picnic island attached by footbridge and additional bridge linking to little lehigh when complete sport island will be the ultimate vacation destination in upstate new york so I read that from the developer's website for the board's consideration regarding how this is being positioned. This is, this is clearly going to be a major commercial resort. Thank you very much for your consideration. We again, urge you to urge the town to deny resort designation. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on the project? Uh, um, hi, my name is, look, it's my sister, she can go first. <laughs> Smart move. Uh, hi. Yep. hi, thanks so much for letting me speak. And um, so I'm here on the island. Um, this is where we eat. And this is what our residential stock looks like. As you can see, it's very small compared to what's proposed. They're, they're gonna do docks right out here that extend. There's a small cut over here where I have small children like Melissa that swim right in here. This is our cove. And I really worry about drunk drivers. So thank you, that's all. So my, my sister, thank you. I think my sister and I are kind of 
thinking a little bit along the same lines. A couple of the things that, that are proposed in the site plan are very hard to see when you're not there in person. The, the extent of the docks that are gonna be, that have been proposed that would be implemented would really drastically change the landscape in the area, both from an environmental standpoint and from a residential contextual standpoint. In addition, some of the, the proposed uses on the site are, are a little concerning to the people that live around there because if you were to go there on a average Saturday or Sunday or beautiful day in the summertime, particularly during the peak season, you'd probably find about 100 boats rafted there enjoying the same beauty that has attracted all of us to the environment. And proposing boat rentals and, and water sport docks and having additional boat traffic, servicing, stocking, running carting to and from the island or bringing large number of people out there to events really is kind of setting up an environment that I think frightens a lot of us from a safety on the water standpoint, um, in addition to some of the nuisances with noise, but also concerns on the unlimited nature of the use in regard to potential transient use as well. So serving customers that aren't just staying there, but having a tiki bar that's accessible by the public and really creating a destination or a commercial operation in the context of a neighborhood. Additionally, when we're looking at the precedent, I think it's very important to everybody up and down the river, we can all draw <clears throat> examples of maybe what was done on the island in the past. On the past, when Mrs. Baker was running the bed and breakfast on the, on the island, it was done with the existing dockage that is already there today. Uh, it didn't necessitate another 250 or, or 270 feet of, of, of dockage to serve. Also, I think there should be concerns, and maybe, maybe it's not the purview here, but it should be discussed about the long-term viability of these projects. Um, the, the islands are riddled with commercial endeavors in their midst, including Bolt Island that had to be rescued by the state, um, Singer Castle, which appears to be fledging if you were to go there today to visit it, um, Ina Island, I don't know if you guys recall, but the boathouse literally disintegrated into the water, and Sport Island was dilapidated, was not successful in the prior use. So I think there's a lot of concern that if this is approved and it goes forward, not only is there no governor over what the next person may do with it, but also what happens when all this is built? This is a six week season, you know, it, and if you get a rainy season, it's, it's not even that. Uh, so I think there's a, a lot of concerns for the viability of the project and the thoughtfulness or lack thereof that's been put into the, the proposal. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> is there uh, anyone else that would like to comment on the project? Yes, Laura, did you have another comment? You have two. Yep. Um, I have my uncle here, Uncle Bobby, here. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Bob Oster, and I've been coming to the river and the Thousand Islands for 76 years. I was in the Navy in Vietnam. I never missed a summer, so the river's in my blood. I think if you were to allow sport to go forward with this project, you would join all the islands in this group. And the group is about 10 different islands ranging in size from 13 acres for summer land to smaller islands. Ina's just a single house. Sylvan's a single house. Um, Ernie Mance's is a single, uh, single house on, on a small island. You would ruin all those islands if you allowed sport to go forward with this development. It would ruin sport too. So that's my comment. I hope you will not change the nature of the river as I've known it for 76 years. Okay, is there any other comment? If not, um, what's going to happen is Andy's going to read the what is the staff recommendation to the county planning board for their recommendation back to the local board. And um, for those of you that may have uh, connected um, since my um, introduction um, earlier, the local board, in this case, the town of Alexandria planning board 
is the board that has the final decision um, on this project. So again, the county planning board is um, will will just be making a recommendation um, back to the local board on this. So, okay, go ahead, Andy. Okay, uh, so the staff recommends that the county planning board pass a motion of approval with modifications. The modifications include primary use of the island being single family rental of the houses. Therefore, events would either not be permitted or a limited number be agreed upon. Events should also be limited to a certain number of guests and include quiet hours. Amenities would only be provided for island renters and or event guests. Any approval should only occur after the New York State Department of Health, New York State Department of, of Environmental Conservation and any other approvals and procedures are followed to limit neighborhood and environmental impact. Also the review of the town's local waterfront revitalization program plan pertaining to the project uh, be completed. Do our right. board members have any discussion on this uh, recommendation? Yeah, hey, I, I would go back to docs again and, and it, um, suggest to the to the town uh, of Alexandria that they consider if it's if it's a matter of trying to to control and limit use uh, to look at docs because anything else you, as some of the people have said it's going to be very difficult to to control use and to enforce it. But with docs, if you uh, if you limit that's a, that's an easy thing to control. It's an easy thing to, to limit use. So I, I would I would urge the, the town to consider that if they have concerns over uh, over the amount of use and, and they want to control them. So. Uh, we we did comment on that right here in the staff report, a number of boat slips. I so, put in a recommendation. Right, right. Yep. Okay. Does, does this uh, recommendation, Andy, does that include all your staff comments then as part of the, the motion? Um, it, it does. I mean, I don't, they, the comment the other comments don't carry the weight of the approval with modifications i think you know it, it goes along with it but the modifications would only carry the weight that are stated i, I think is that is that correct mike well yes all, all of the comments that were in the staff report do go back to um the local board in our letter uh, all of those comments plus the the detailed recommendation I, so just I, so I understand before we vote, um, with the docs, are you saying they sh we should suggest they limit the number or study the number or figure out why they're needed to have that many or what What exactly are you saying about the docs? What I'm saying is a way to control use. It's a way, right. it's a way to, it's a way, a way to, if the concerns are that there'd be too much use in events and everything else, one way to do that is, is through the, taking a look at the, the, the docks and limiting, uh, say the, the dockage to, uh, to what they, the kind of use that, uh, that, uh, that that's been traditional and what have you. It's a, it's a way of dealing with it. Otherwise trying to, as, as Bob Sly had said, trying to limit use once it's improved and everything else, you're not going to have a zoning officer out there every weekend or every wedding to, uh, to, to go over this, but, uh, but if you right. really get not as concerned about how to do that and not have, uh, you know, have officers out there and all that is one way to do that is with docs. So I, I just say, just as a suggestion to them, you know. Um, I, I want to piggyback on that uh, as a staff. So when we were talking to Mr. LaSalle, the project engineer about the project, um, we were hearing that this doc here is proposed, uh, for the purpose of that doc is so that small tour boats can deliver people to these larger events. So I agree that the concept of limiting the docks would limit the number of users to a point, but I don't think that's the only way to do it. I mean, dock is installed and if it's deep enough, um, you could have the smaller tour boats bringing in plenty of people, um, you know, over the course of time. So. I, I wouldn't really want to hang our hat on that one way of thinking. So if the board has 
any other thoughts on it, feel free to bring it up now. Okay. Well, I'd like to go back to your, put your uh, uh, recommendation there back on the screen, Andy. Sure. Um, there. <clears throat> I'd like to eliminate the, the definition there to include events. I think we're far exceeding our jurisdiction to say that you can have one event or you can have two. I, I think that is, uh, should be eliminated and specifically addressed by the town. If they, they want to uh, have events in their definition of a resort, let them do that. But uh, I don't think we can, you know, we can't say that one event is okay or two events uh, is not okay. So, so if I'm going to make a recommendation, I'd, I'd eliminate that one sentence. Therefore, events would either not be permitted or limited number agreed upon. I, I think, uh, <clears throat> David, what we were thinking there was that that is an issue, a condition, or you know, whatever you want to call it, that the, the local board should be considering. We weren't putting any kind of number. We're just saying that the local board could either consider not allowing any type of e event to occur on the island or in discussions they could agree upon only, you know a limited number of events as opposed to leaving it wide open and saying that you know they can hold events there with with no limit they could hold one every night or they could hold one every weekend or or whatever we we were putting that back on the local board um, to make a specific decision on that other. It wasn't that we were recommending that they only do one or two or three, or, you know, we weren't putting a specific number on it. Is that, is that right, Andy? Um, yeah, yeah, because, you know, as we've all sort of progressed in our understanding, you know, the, the, project involves different uses. I mean, they may align with each other, but the intensity of the event is clearly what is the main concern, um, at least from what I'm hearing. And it, if the board, if the local board determines they shouldn't be allowed, then that's how they're going to decide. Um, it is allowed with a site plan review in this district. But I think we, we all kind of realize that this is why we have boards, so that they can deliberate on it, right? So this is the process of deliberating, sort of presented to them that they really should look at. Um, now, a different way to go would be to deny this and say, well, if you want to propose single family, go ahead. We, we were just sort of addressing it as, as we were... Um, understanding and realizing that certain aspects would have less of an impact. So that's, that's how we decided to uh, recommend, but certainly however you guys feel is how you should move forward. How about the rest of the board? You guys are got thoughts of what we should be doing. Is it possible to recommend that um, to obviously their municipality that single family use only and events by permit so that there is that there has to be an approval per each event or is that not something we can recommend well the zoning law right now i didn't find any special event process in it so normally a use is requested and then it's ruled on um, now, e specific permits for each event, that would be a different type of thing. And they do that in some areas, just not aware of it in that town. Okay. Because we've run into this in the past with other uh, commercial events that, uh, you know, are, well, we'll, we'll uh, definitely require a permit for each one. And I think as... Uh, uh, 
I guess it was Cliff that brought out that, you know, you're not going to have a, a zoning officer out there every weekend. It's uh, so remote from the center of the town that, uh, you know, once it's either approved or not, uh, that's kind of going to be the way it's going to exist. Well, if so why I was thinking if we recommended that, that they do require a permit per each event, it gives them the ability to have teeth in it if their local law approves, allows them. Does, does their, what does their zoning say what a, a resort is? Okay, I'll, I'll read it to you. Um, <clears throat> give me a second. So, a resort, um, a commercial business that offers a variety of facilities such as, but not limited to lodging, dining, conventions, marina, camping, and recreation. Mm -hmm. And there, there's no uh, definition or change because it's an island as opposed to a, a mainland event? Right, no, no, there isn't. Um, there, they have site plan or they have criteria for resorts, but they're, you know, it, it sounds more like a hotel, like what they've had historically in the village. Yeah. So it, it doesn't deal with waterfront or docks or anything like that. Um, and that's that's where I'm I'm thinking it's not helpful the criteria they have right now. In this case, they just don't, you know, it, it, it deals with traffic access and roads and off street parking, which is vehicles. You could consider access being the boats and the docks uh, similarly, but that's not what it says. And I, I think one, one person said, what about a boat traffic study? And that, that's what I wanted. I, I was thinking, well, how many boats are there? And what are you expecting? What is the business plan would indicate that all, all for you, but that's not what we're looking at. And, um, you know, it calls for proper landscaping and open space and each, each rentable bedroom shall have a bathroom or, or shower and toilet. Again, those are not relevant to this at all. So, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we've got to react to what's here. And our thought was to consider the separation of, of you know, single family is certainly appropriate uh, in our minds. And then events would be more impactful. And that's where you want to deliberate on. And as well as the amenities. So again, if you want to modify this, let me know. And then we can oh, go I, on I, from there. Let me let me raise another question. Do they have a master plan? And what do they recommend as far as the islands as opposed to the mainland? Um, right. Uh, hang on a second. With the comprehensive plan, um, you know, our office provided assistance on that. So um, at that time, we were, the town was con more concerned with jobs and growth and investment and business opportunities that would help the town grow. Um, it was at a time when that was a, 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 a slow time in the economy. So um, to be honest with you, the islands, I'm not sure how much we really focused on the islands. We were more focused on the Route 12 corridor and the Route 26 and employment. Um, also, sewer and water near uh, Swan Bay, that whole area, they were trying to get sewer and water, again, for job growth. Um, but let me find, I'm just looking for the <clears throat> vision. The vision. Uh, How long ago was, was that plan, Andy? Uh, 2013. Yeah. They probably should have had well, a separate, to... separate district just for the islands. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's right. Um, Alexander, so here's the vision. 
Alexandria's residents enjoy the area's spectacular scenery, numerous outdoor recreation opportunities, abundant, abundance of local open space, as well as the rural and waterfront lifestyles that attract seasonal and year round residents year after year. Its communities serve as gathering places and service centers for many. The town would like to attract or generate investment to allow current businesses and farms to flourish, establish additional employees, and maintain its unique environmental quality of life for current the future residents, property owners, and visitors. Um, then there were uh, six goals and a bunch of strategies related to each goal. Um, but it, there's also policies in the waterfront revitalization plan program that pertain to this. And that's where we were putting it on the local board to consider those policies as well. Mm -hmm. And part of that is water quality, um, you know, limiting septic issues, you know, all the, the usual things that would be included in those. Um, I'm not sure how long you want me to speak on this. No, I, I just raised that issue and, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, nice to say that they ought to be looking at it with a, a better fine tooth comb, but um, mm -hmm. they probably won't do that. But, uh, well, if uh, if I make this recommendation, does it include all, all your other comments? I mean, I can't uh, include all of those in a motion that I make. I yes, gotta it do does. It. I got to do it by reference to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just not sure what to say about the doc. Well, that, that's one issue of it, but. Uh, okay. uh, David, before you move forward, I believe that the Laura Oster raised her hand. Okay. Sorry, that was technical difficulty. Where? <laughs> okay. Well, for, Phil Kerr has his hand raised. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just think um, you touched on a very important point that I raised before that, um, you know, the, the, uh, it doesn't quite gel to say approval but with these conditions tied to the resort definition that you read from the zoning. Um, the resort definition allows unlimited use. And so I think it's super important that the board um, consider that uh, reality and see, reject or deny site plan review for resort use, approve, recommending single family residential or other uses through another process. Um, that's such a critical component to this. Um, so I just think it's very important technical difference. You can't have approval and then all these conditions tied to the resort definition as it exists. And so denial to allow that to be clarified in the town code and suggest the town clarify their island resort and all their island definitions first, um, and then allow specific uses um, that are appropriate for residential neighborhoods on the island. Thank you. Bob Sly has his hand raised. Yeah, you know, lawyers can't help themselves, but um, if, what you've all been talking about is what is the essence of this whole problem and that is that as proposed as a resort with all the uses authorized in a resort zone or for a resort in this neighborhood uh, in this particular marine residential district it, it just bespeaks the reason why it is that right now the county needs to recommend that the application for the establishment of resort be disapproved. There are too many what ifs, there are too many, I, I still disagree on what, what uses can be pro, proscribed by a planning board in connection with the site plan. I, I have some basic disagreements on that. I think it's just gonna cause nothing but problems. And once you give something, good luck taking it away. So there's nothing wrong in my view with recommending no and asking the developer to come back with a real plan because right now they're not giving you one 
and they're not giving one to the town. And, uh, you know, the town needs some help, obviously. Uh, there's a reason why there's a referral to the county planning board. It can help a town get a little backbone dealing with somebody coming to town with some money, throwing some money around. We're going to make your town, you're going to do real well. But they got to think about the whole reason. You know, this is a neighborhood, and it's a neighborhood of people who own single family residences, and they're telling you the problems that they think they're going to have, and uh, they just need some help right now. And that's that's why we would ask that you recommend against approval of the, the establishment of the resort. And I'll be quiet. Thanks. A lot of what you say oh. is uh, philosophically correct, Mr. Sly, but I have trouble telling them that they can't do something where they already say it's allowed in that district, that, that part of the zoning. I mean, if they include resort in their definition at this point in time that would say that's allowed, uh, kind of have difficulty uh, telling them that they can't do it. Well, that's exactly right. If they approve a resort, they can do anything that the thing resort says, but they can disapprove a site. Hi, Bob, this is uh, Michael Borsi. Um, I, I guess I wanna ask you a question is, you know, when a local municipality is reviewing a project under site plan review, are they allowed to put any um, conditions on their approval? In my opinion, they can talk about the site plan itself Okay, you move this dock over here, you know, make sure you do this, that, or the other thing. But to say you can only use it for certain things when the when the code says uh, you're approving a resort and a resort allows those things, I'm sorry. I don't think they can impose those conditions. I, I, I know you and I disagree on that, but I do not believe that they have the power to talk about use once the town board says those uses are approved. It's my opinion. Okay. Well, I, again, Mr. Sly, I, I agree with you in that aspect, but we've got a, I don't know if the statute, but a regulation in their zoning, they say resorts are allowed and their definition of resort may not be the greatest in the world, but uh, you know, they're, they're saying that something is allowed in that area because it, of zoning. It, it's, a, it's allowed with site plan approval. If you don't approve the site plan, it's not allowed. That's my point. Yeah. It's a site plan approved use. If the site plan is not approved, it's not an approved use. There's a lot of work that needs well, to be done. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, sir. Um, I, I guess what, one thing I would put to that, Bob, is my understanding has always been um, between the two types of reviews, a site plan review and a special use permit or a conditional use permit, whatever term you want to use mm -hmm. um, for, for that review is that, you know, through the, a zoning process, developing a comprehensive plan and writing your zoning law, that municipalities determine what uses they deem allowable in districts. They can be allowed by simply by a zoning permit they can be allowed if they have site plan approval or they can be allowed by a special use permit. My understanding has always been if a use is listed as a site plan review use, then it has been decided that that use is allowed in that district. But that use may have, um, there, that there, there may be concerns over how that use is put on the property. And that is what the local board would be looking at is the aspect, the, the physical aspects of how the development is being proposed as opposed to a special use permit where the town has flagged that use, that type of use that requires a special use permit as the use itself is, has a potential to have a negative impact on you know the the area it's being proposed, and that a municipality has a um, 
uh, but more of an, uh, the ability that they can deny that use because it cannot meet, you know, special use um, conditions that the town or you know municipality may have uh, set forth for that use. I, I don't deny anything you're saying, but here we have a neighborhood, and if and under the general municipal law section, uh, the, the subdivision L, two thirty nine L, and or. Uh, a town planning board's general authority, if they believe that the site plan as proposed is going to uh, create uh, a deleterious impact on the community as a whole or on the neighborhood as a whole, they can deny it. And there's some case law on that. There's even some case law on uh, if it's going to affect the visual character of the neighborhood. But this, the planning board has that authority to deny a site plan under those circumstances. And that's why I keep talking about the residential character of this neighborhood and how it's going to, if, if a resort is allowed, how that's going to change the entire character of that neighborhood and why I'm, why we continue to ask that the county planning board recommend denial of the site plan as submitted as for a resort and see where it goes from there. Mike, I have a question. Yep. Uh, can can we, uh, as a board, recommend to the town a moratorium and have them revisit the zoning? Well, we yes, we we could recommend that. Um, what would uh, that wouldn't necessarily um, impact or affect this project because it has been submitted, and it, and I'm sure. You know, Bob can speak to this much better uh, than than I can, but um, it, it could come down to how far along they are in the process. If they would consider that this application would not be impacted um, by a more moratorium on resorts in the in the MR district. Yeah, that that would be a tough one. I I actually agree with your analysis where you said that it's just. These things probably, these islands should probably be zoned island, not zoned, you know, marine residential. It should be zoned island, and islands should be treated differently. But that isn't the way the code's written. I mean, I, I get that. Uh, that isn't what the town board did. Uh, if it was just zoned island, it'd be a lot easier, but it's not. If they were to deny site plan approval and then adopt a moratorium for island development, that might be something different. First, they'd have to deny site plan approval, and then they could, I believe, adopt a local law imposing a moratorium. Of course, you have to have a beginning date and a stop date, and you have to actually study it, and you have to be real about it, not just try to stop somebody. You have to say, look, we really need to study what's going on. And if they were to study whether there should be a different designation for islands within the town of Alexandria rather than uh, marine residential but an island, I think that's a it's a bona fide real thing that the town board could embark on. My opinion. Can we maybe add that as a recommendation that if they do turn it down, um, that they consider the moratorium? Well, what, what I would say is no, no matter what they do, if they approve it, if they um, you know den deny the application, that uh, either way, the town should probably look at the Marine Residential District and have a discussion over the mainland section of that district as opposed to the islands and make a determination through a, you know, through a, you know, proper, you know, um, land use, you know, um, process, you know, to determine what if, you know, different regulations, you know, should be placed on islands as opposed to, you know, uh, sh mainland uh, shoreline district. I, I think that can be, you know, a, a comment that goes back to the board, you know, because again, if they were to approve this, then okay, that, you know, that that's a, you know, a, a, an approved project now on the board, but I still think that maybe they they should look at this issue. Um, and I, I will say that while it wasn't really written in any of our comments or the recommendation, 
Um, what we typically do in, I'll politely say, sticky situations like this with our recommendations going back when it's a, you know, controversial, you know, project in a community that the local board lean on their local attorney, you know, they're the town attorney on helping them through this process. Um, because we, we got to remember too, it, it's, it's not just a land use process for this. There also is the, the seeker process, which is the, the way it's set up. It's a component of um, zoning in this issue where the local board has to go through the seeker process and look at all the environmental issues on this project. And basically at the end, before they can move forward with, yes, we approve this site plan, they have to say that they've determined that there's, you know, no negative environmental impacts or take it through, you know, to a, a higher level of environmental review on this. Um, so again, we, and I, I believe after the discussion we've been having that we will add to our recommendation that the, the, the local um, planning board, you know, utilize their town attorney to assist them um, through this process. Uh, let me ask just a question at this point in time. I see Cliff has left the meeting. Do I still have a quorum? I believe so. Art, are you still here? Art's still here. Uh, Randy is still here. Um, Charlene, Dave, Deb. Okay. All right. And Lisa. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, we, we do have, I see uh, Steve Wood has his hand up. Yes. Thanks. And sorry for the, uh, uh, the technical di difficulties before, uh, I'm Steve Wood. Uh, I own an Island, which is, um, uh, an over budget uh, residential project, which is the love of uh, Debbie's and our lives, which uh, provides a great place for friends and family and grandkids to learn to swim and love the river. On my computer, I'm sitting here looking at the Marine Residential District. And I, and, and I wish that, I, I don't know if it can be put up uh, in uh, on the screen, uh, the description of the uh, Alex Bay zoning, um, but it says very clearly the purpose of the Marine Residential District is designated to promote residential neighborhoods and certain supporting marine uses, which are compatible with the environment and local area. Well, you know, I would, and the permitted uses are single and two family dwellings, including manufactured or modular homes in camp. Well, you know, success, that's what the area is. That's, that's what we have here. And and then it says with site plan review, all of these other things and uh, can be approved. But by the fact that it's separate and by the fact that it needs a site plan review, it would also seem, and I agree with Bob Sly, that they can turn it down or why have the difference? And, and I would assume that you would agree that a driving theater doesn't make any sense at this site. Well, that's allowed per, with site plan review. So, you know, just like a drive-in theater doesn't make any sense for this location, I would suggest you to that a resort doesn't make sense. The, the use is completely residential at this point, and in my mind should, should remain so. And I would hope that the board would follow the guidance of the neighbors and, uh, and not approve uh, this re as a resort. Thank you. I also see that Melissa has her hand up again. Hi, yes. I just wanted to also comment that if you open this up to a resort status and you allow this zoning that you can basically, um, it might actually hurt your tourism. So then I can maybe zone to have a restaurant on my island and not use it as residential. And maybe the guy next to me will have uh, his tiki bar open. And, you know, it's going to really ruin what people come here for. And that is what supports your jobs. 
People don't come here to watch 100 drunk people at a tiki bar. They come here for the islands and the residential buildings. And so, I mean, I would consider that if you open this up to a resort status, that you're allowing carte blanche for other things to happen with other people who have these great big ideas and want to change the face of everything in the neighborhood. So just consider that as well. And the border. What about border patrol? How is that going to work? I can jump off sport and swim to Canada. So. I don't know anything that we have any sort of, you know, international treaty that uh, we can rely on as far as relations with Canada or that type of thing. So uh, I guess that's up to the Border Patrol itself. But again, I, I raise the issue that if their zoning right now says that resorts are allowed in it, um, either they change their zoning some way or uh, eliminate that definition. But, uh, but anyway, okay. Mike, are we? Hi, this is Randy. Hello, um, go ahead. Yeah, hello. Randy, yes, go Randy, go ahead. Um, yeah, a lot of people had great points. Um, my only consideration, well, there's a few of them, but my main one is it's a sweeping change from the sounds of things. Um, I don't think there was one neighbor that was for it from the sounds of it. Um, and when you're dealing with something like that, I think somebody needs to go back and do their homework a little bit more. Um, because once it's done, it's over. And, and I know what it's like to go to a place to relax and not be able to relax because of what's going on around you. Um, so I can't support that. What we have written up right now, I think somebody to go back and do some more homework before I can support it. That's just my two cents. Yeah. Two cents, right? One of the board members. Oh, Jefferson County. So, well, we are, um, the, there is a, a requirement under the 239M that the county planning department, or sorry, the county planning board has 30 days once there's been a referral from the project. So what our board needs to do today is you know either act on the recommendation that the staff put forward or the board members will have to um you know come up with another uh recommendation that they want to put forward and can be approved to send to um the local planning board otherwise if we don't we either have to hold a special meeting or the 30 days will run out and then there there's no weight behind any type of um, recommendation because it would just be um, some staff, general staff comments that would go back for te you know technical support um, reasons. It's going to be up to the county planning board members uh, what you would like to do. I'm for that personally, um, but regardless, even if we if we were the the um, the county board were to deny it um, and not go with the recommendations, the the town could still do what they felt proper for them. I mean, there is home rule, correct? But it would take a super majority to overrule to override our rec that recommendation that you make. Yeah. Well, then that's what they need to do then because it sounds to me like the only people that are for it are the people that are doing it. Right? Well, a super majority of their planning board members. Understood, understood. But that's, that's the home rule issue. Um, I, I, I just think there's such a such a disapproval by the neighbors that they need to look at what they're doing. Maybe the, what their zoning calls for isn't really applicable here. That's my concern. Oh, I want to mute myself again. Well, go ahead and make the motion, Randy. I'll make that a motion that we, uh, as the county board, deny the request as stated and uh, we'll 
look at it in the future. I'll second that. All right, motion made and seconded. Is there any comments, additional comments? If not, then... Uh, well, oh, uh, hold on, um, David. I just want to be be clear on this. Um, the the recommend recommendation that is put forward is that the county planning board is recommending disapproval of the project um, as referred by the local board. Is that, is, Randy? Is that what your um, motion is? Yes, sir. It is. Okay. Now you may, just for clarification. Um, Randy, you did say that, you know, we would see it again. Well, that, that all depends on, you know, uh, on the, the local board. I mean, like, like it has been stated, they can, they can, um, do a super, they can do a super majority, majority plus one, and they can override our, our disapproval and they can go ahead and, you know, uh, approve the project um the, they could disapprove it um uh, also uh, you know and, and go along with it it's just I, I just don't want our board members to think automatically that if we disapprove it we're, we're going to see it again it depends on what could be proposed in the in the in the future for the project if it would require um county planning board to review it or not I agree with you completely, and I'm very comfortable with the fact that if they do come through with a supermajority, um, the people have spoken. Um, and if it comes back to us, maybe it'll come back in a more of a, of a form that everyone can see is more palatable for everyone. Right now, I, I don't see that. So um, I'm just trying to do what I feel is right. Um, so yeah, let the let the let the chips fall where they may. Okay, I guess what I would ask um, with this vote, because it is difficult being a virtual voting, um, that I'm going to go through, and once, once um, David uh, puts forth um, this motion for a vote, I'm gonna um, go through the list of names that I have that were at least originally in on the, uh, the the meeting, I'm not sure exactly who who is left, yeah. um, and okay. I'm going to call a name out and ask you to um, vote yay or nay on the on the motion to recommend disapproval on the uh, the Sport Island project. Yeah. Okay. okay. So are are we ready to vote, David? Yep. Pull the board. Okay, um, and this is just uh, the list that I have down here. Um, Deb McAtee. You're, you're muted. I'm sorry, I. So you, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't hear that. I, I, I'm yeah. voting in favor of what is being recommended that we recommend to the town that it is declined okay um next on the list uh john storms is john still on okay let me just check here yep it looks like john okay um david prosser no Randy. Aye. Charlene. Charlene. Okay, she might have stepped away. We'll move on. Um, Cliff. He's left also. Cliff left also. Okay, Art Batterman. Uh, let me check here. Uh, Art, you're yeah. muted. Well, he's on a phone, it, it, Ike. So. Yeah, it, yeah. His his there he is. Yep, I'm uh, voting in favor of the 
motion. Okay. Lisa. Yes. Okay, I want to go back to Charlene. Are you, she's not muted, but she may have stepped away. She's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, give a thumbs up if you approve. Oh, there, Charlene. Charlene, did, did you hear our motion? Oh, you're, I can't hear you. I'm not, are, are you, okay. If she can hear us, we must, she must be able to hear us. Charlene, give a thumbs up. Okay. With your thumb. Star six to unmute. She's well, she's nodding yes. She's not. All right, we'll have to take that as an affirmative. Did your volume, I believe, she's, I believe she is nodding yes. So she is also in support of the motion, but um, are there any other county playing board members on the line that I did not call? George wasn't here. Uh, Dwight wasn't nope. here. So. What's the count? Nope. And it appears that John left and Cliff left. Um, so that leaves us with just six people left. Um, that's, and I'm going to say this out loud so everyone's hearing. I have uh, Deb McAtee, Dave Prosser, Randy, Charlene, Art, and Lisa, so that does give us a quorum, but I have uh, five yeses for the motion and I have one no for the motion. I believe because of, um, we're an 11 member board that we need six votes um one way or the other to be able to advance this and i'm uh, i'm gonna reach out to bob sly if he agrees with that that we need six yeses to move the move motion forward yes you need the majority of the entire board yeah okay i just wanted that the confirm not just for me but for uh, everyone that is uh still hanging on um for the call here um, Any way so, we can call the, call these people? Um, I, I well, uh, I don't believe that that would be. Um, I, I I know that we can't call them on the phone. I guess and ask them to vote. Um, well, I. I they now, if, if they were to come back into the meeting, but they weren't part of the discussions that have occurred, so I would be, I would be leery of bringing one of the other members uh, back in to vote on this and not have that be a legal issue moving forward with this. I think that only the two that. Uh, heard all of the discussion and comments should be allowed to vote. All right. Well, if it means the board can't take any action, then can I change my vote? Mm. I, I believe as the saying goes, it's your prerogative. Well, if, if it means, uh, you know, us, us to either having a, a, a recommendation or no recommendation at all, I'll have to change my vote then and agree to the recommendation. Thank you, Dave. Okay, so with, For with David, right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, this would be moving forward um, on a motion 
to um, recommend disapproval to the local board um, for this project. We have uh, six yeses, um, which is a quorum of the our full board. Um, so um, that is what we will send back to the local board for their consideration. Um, now for our board members, thank you for staying this long. Um, we, we do have two intergovernmentals um, that we, we need to handle before we adjourn the meeting. But Mike, um, so in, so, Mike yes. when, when you, yep. you send that back, you got to tell them that they need a super majority to overrule it. Oh, yes. Yep. That, that's part of our standard um, right. letter to go back for any type of um, recommendation other than the project of local concern. Okay. Andy, you want to bring up your, yep, and yeah, we go have for the uh, intergovernmental? Uh, yes. Okay, so the last two things here are the two funding requests by um, communities. The first one is proposed by the town of Philadelphia. They want to extend their water line to... Um, serve additional 73 residences. Uh, let me just get my pointer here. Along uh, Route 11, and um, it's hard to read, but they're extending water service to this area of the town. Um, so they're serving those homes, businesses, farmland, and vacant lots. The proposed district will extend about 26,500 feet from the village down uh, along uh, Irish Avenue and connect to, to an eight inch water line. I'm sorry, at the water line that's there now is at Irish Avenue, but it'll connect in and add capacity for this uh, area in the red line. Okay. Uh, I don't have a budget for the project, so that's why I didn't send out a staff report with it, but that's, you, you've heard the description, that's all I have right now. Should I just keep going? Yeah, isn't there one more? Yeah. Yes, there's one more. So the, oh, I'm sorry, here's the other drawing they submitted. Just shows you the, uh, the full parcels that'll be affected. Um, so also the village of Theresa is proposing funding, um, oh, I'm sorry, from the Rural Utility Service. The other one was USDA Rural Development. Um, so Theresa wants to upgrade and improve their municipal wastewater treatment system. And um, this is the collection system in green and the red are the wastewater treatment plant sites. Um, there's three of them, I guess, I didn't know that. And <clears throat> they've got some funding, a million dollars from another source, but this this source there, they wanna request more funds. Again, I don't have a budget, but um, so those are the two projects we, we uh, reviewed this month. Okay. okay. Well, it's always been our policy to uh, have the planning department send a letter of recommendation uh, for those approvals. And I'll make that motion. Uh, Our standard one second. Sir. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, so uh, the department will send letters of recommendation on those two. Yes. 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 Uh, we have nothing else before the board. Okay. No. No training or any meetings or anything coming up. Uh, we, while we we are um, talking with Department of State about coming up in September to do an evening training. Um, but that hasn't been um, set in stone yet. Okay. All right. Lisa. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, this is almost a three hour meeting. I think it's a record for No, oh, no. Make, make your motion. Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Charlene, second. Second. Yeah. Charlene seconded. All those in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Aye. Aye. Good. Thank, Thank you, Peter. you. Hey everybody.